Hello, everybody, and welcome to Taking Control, the ADHD podcast on Rash Pixel FM. I'm Pete Wright, and right over there is the very well-organized Nikki Kinzer. <laughs> Well, I don't know if I'd go that far uh, right now in my life, um, <laughs> but I sure like to talk about it. <laughs> so we'll start there. <laughs> right? Baby steps. Yeah, baby steps. Baby steps to the organizing tasks. Uh, we are going to be talking about quick organizing tasks. And no, we're not going to be diving deeply into, you know, COVID organizing. That's not what this is about. But... If you are feeling a little bit overwhelmed, we have some quick organizing tasks that can help you feel more in control of your life and your space as a result of it. Uh, And so I can't wait to talk about this. It's been a long time since we've uh, dipped our toes into the organizing stuff. Uh, Before we do that, head over to TakeControlADHD.com. You can get to know us a little bit better. You can listen to the show right there on the website or subscribe to our mailing list, and we will send you an email each time a new episode is released. Connect with us on Twitter or Facebook at TakeControlADHD. And if this show has ever touched you or helped you make a change in your life for the better, if you found that you understand your relationship with ADHD in some sort of new way, we invite you to consider supporting the show directly through Patreon. Patreon is listener-supported podcast. Podcasting. With a few dollars a month, you can help guarantee that we continue to grow the show, add new features, invest more heavily in our community. Uh, did you did you catch up on the Brain Playground this weekend? Nikki? I loved it. I, oh my gosh! I'm going to have my daughter look at it because there were so many fidgets. Oh my god! And reviews and thoughts and links and Ella, you did a wonderful job. Ellie, absolutely loved it. Did a that was a full Blaine Blaine a brain playground mic drop yes. with fidget reviews. It had a table of contents. It was amazing. She's and amazing. It yes. was it's was just fantastic. So mm-hmm. yes, thank you, Ellie, for uh, continuing to be a part of the army of people who are making this just such a fun community and and, and a well informed. Uh, community of ADHD peeps. Uh, You guys are the best. So please check it out. If you've ever thought about supporting the show, uh, come come hang out with us. Patreon.com slash the ADHD podcast to learn more. All right, Nikki. All right, Pete. Let's get organized. Let's let's try. (laughs) So... (laughs) Thing. Okay, what I, is the thing? This is the thing. So I love that you said this is not about COVID, right? Um, I had somebody talk to me um, the other day, actually, it was sometime last week, and they were talking about podcasts and they were saying that they s- sort of stopped listening to some of the normal podcasts because all people were talking about is COVID and they're kind of tired of talking about COVID. And I thought, you know, I'm kind of tired of talking about it too. Yeah. So I, yeah, uh, I thought that, and that's why I'm so glad you framed this and I'm going to frame it again too. This is not about getting organized in quarantine. I think that, um, there's some pressure that was put on people at the beginning, you know, oh, well, you're home. And so here, get all this stuff done, but not really taking into account that you're stressed because you just lost your job. Um, and maybe the last thing you want to do is organize a closet, right? So. It's not about that. What I want to encourage people to do is that there are quick organizing tasks that you can do that won't require a whole day of work um, or, you know, hours of your time, uh, but will still make you feel really good about what you did and somewhat productive under, you know, whatever circumstance it is. So that's Some, that's where somewhat I'm at. productive. Honestly, that is the somewhat bar for productive. me, right? If you could just reach somewhat productive, right? I'm feeling good. <laughs> I know, you, you know, and I think that, gosh, I mean, you bring up a really good point right off the bat. Expectations are always so high yeah. when it comes to to do lists and tax tasks and projects and everything. Everything is so high, and uh, and that's why, yeah, it's somewhat productive if you can just go to bed and feel good about you know getting some sorting done. And I'm talking about 15 minutes of sorting, right? We're not talking about hours in the garage. I mean, this is very different. So yeah. yeah, I like it. It's a it's a nice kind of um, way to get things done. But yeah, it's somewhat productive. It's somewhat productive. Go. That's exactly yeah. right. All right. So where would you like to start? Well, I have a few reminders that I want to share with people. Um, 
first of all, this kind of already kind of tags um, from what we were already talking about. Give yourself permission to be okay with not wanting to organize your space ever. Oh, okay. <laughs> right? I mean, it, you're you're really probably never going to wake up and just say, oh, I'm going to organize today. Yeah. It doesn't really happen. It's not, you know, it's one of those executive functions that every adhd -er has trouble with, and it's really hard to do. So give yourself permission to know that it's okay, that you're not going to necessarily want to do it. Um, but it's also uh, giving yourself permission that if you do want to get some organizing done, good enough is good enough. Mm -hmm. So we're never looking for perfection. It's always kind of a work in progress. Giving your permission to start small. You do not need to do a whole room. Uh, and you certainly do not need to have the expectation of, of getting your whole house um, or apartment or condo or whatever you live in um, organized as well. I was talking to a new client last week. And one of the things that we're going to start with in her coaching journey is, is about organizing. And when we talked about this theory of just starting small, this is what she said. She said, you know, I guess I just needed to hear somebody give me the permission that it was okay to do just a drawer. Yeah. And I'm like, well, you've got right. it. You've got right. the permission. <laughs> Right. Um, because you do, again, those expectations become so big that you think that you've got to do the whole dresser. You've got to do everything else. And so really starting small. And I'm also going to say, give yourself permission to not feel bad about unfinished projects. Mm. Wow. <laughs> That's kind of weird, right? Yeah. I, considering I I broke a toilet this weekend, and I think I would have felt bad about that had I not fixed it. I, I get well, it. Well, <laughs> that's kind of like when the the dishwasher, you know, starts flooding. You kind of yeah. need to you need to fix that. I was yeah. trying to do something, and I made it worse, <laughs> and then I had to make it better. <laughs> right, right, right. Uh, but when it does come to starting projects, uh, at, you know, these little organizing things, I think it really is important to, to give yourself permission that doing it kind of halfway really is good enough. Mm -hmm. um, any progress is something to celebrate. And again, we don't have to do everything at once. And if you start and you don't finish it, that's okay. You, you got a little bit done. And maybe the next time you go into that area, you will be able to find what you need. Mm -hmm. And and that's uh, that's the success there. I, I feel like we've, and we've talked about this before, and I cannot for the life of me remember the source. I think I mentioned it, couldn't remember it before. And you actually came up with the source. It was this, uh, this, was, uh, my wife had read this uh, a blog post and was like, we're going to try a thing, which is every night we're going to dry our sink out and make sure that it's like polished. And Oh yeah. Fly lady. Fly lady. That was it. Yeah. We've had this yeah. exact conversation before. Yeah. And that has been sort of stunning, right? It's the smallest part uh, that we mm -hmm. could possibly do, right? Drying out this thing takes 10 seconds. But when you come down in the morning, it becomes a halo, right? It's a right. thing that we want to affect other things. And so as I'm looking at this and thinking about like doing this, being okay with doing the smallest thing, we, we've got to be uh, excited and put ourselves in a position of being provoked by the halo effect. Like if you do the Absolutely. smallest thing, there's a very good chance you're going to get excited about doing the next smallest thing. Yeah, and yeah. that's motivation in and of itself. Absolutely. Well, and another example on top of that is just even making your bed every day. Yes. If you can just get to the point where you're making your bed every day and that's the only thing you're doing, at least you have some kind of order. Right? Well, you know, I mean, when I make my bed every day, I want to pick up the dirty clothes on the floor. And when I oh, pick right. up the dirty clothes on the floor, I want to line up, you know, my slippers or right. hang my robe up or something like that. Something, like yeah. those little things that only take a few seconds more. I'm more inclined to do it if the bed is made. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, so true. Halo. Yep. So uh, some things to do to set yourself up for some fun, because, you know, I again, I know organizing isn't necessarily fun, but you can make it a lot more entertaining. And I I uh, put a lot of value on music here. I think it makes a big difference when you put on your favorite music, especially if it's uplifting and uh, makes you happy and you just want to dance. Right. That's just going to uplift your room or your mood. I'm sorry. It's going to uplift your mood while you're doing this task. I 
also listen to podcasts um, when I'm doing organizing or cleaning. I think it just makes the time go by faster. Um, and then one of my favorite things to do, which uh, won't surprise you, especially when it comes to, to chores and organizing, is I love to work in sprints. I do as much as I can, like in a, in a 10, 15 minute period of time. And I just make it a game you know, take a 10 minute break, come back for 15 minutes. I don't do, I don't necessarily do the 25, five Pomodoro, but as mm-hmm. we've learned, there is real no science behind that anyway. Yeah, so, right. <laughs> we can do whatever time, do whatever that we, we want. want. <laughs> yeah. But I always get more done just knowing that I'm trying to beat the clock. There's something about yeah. that, you know, you know, I got to tell you what I miss most again, not a COVID podcast cast, but I deeply miss having guests for this reason. Yes. Because having somebody come over is the instant like uh, impetus for a sprint that will get my house clean. It's and, so funny you said it, that because right? last, yes, last Saturday we, um, because it was such a beautiful day in Oregon, my best friend and my daughter's best friend our mother and daughter too. So we said, hey, we want you guys to come over in our backyard and we'll have a family picnic six feet apart. You bring your own food and drinks. We'll Mm -hmm. have our own food. But I knew that they might need to use the bathroom. (laughs) (laughs) So there's a path. So I basically made sure I disinfected and cleaned the bathroom really well. So everybody was safe. Like everybody felt safe about using the bathroom. And and really, honestly, we're like probably one of the safest houses to be in right now because we don't go anywhere. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, I had to clean everything that they could see <laughs> and pick everything up. So you're right. There's this path from the back door to the downstairs bathroom. That's perfect. That is perfect. <laughs> That's exactly how our, how our house is. Yeah. It's a great motivator. And, it is. You know, so even if you can have people outside and go that path, that might help. Well, and know. little things like vacuuming, right? We sometimes right. are not so great about vacuuming the house. And so, you know, we find if, if one of us gets out the vacuum and vacuums the living room, it is so easy to vacuum the rest of the house. Like it's just, it doesn't take, it, you just have to start, right? And so... Halo. Yeah, those are one of those things that is kind of annoying not to finish, yeah. at, at least for me. It's like oh, one totally. of those kind of annoying tolerations. It's like I, I kind of uh, need to finish all of that. Because you yeah. can see where you stop. You can see it. There yeah, are lines. For sure. mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. I, don't, I don't care for that. <laughs> so, yeah, no. What can you do in a few minutes that are going to that that's going to make you feel good? Um what I want to do is really focus in on step 2 of the organizing process. So, we last year we did a series about the different steps. Um in my online course on my website, we go into much more detail about these steps. So, if you're looking to get into more detail and and work on some bigger projects, please uh, go check out the online courses. Um but just to give you a quick review of what I mean by step two, and then we're going to go straight into what step, you know, a little bit more in depth in step two. The first step of organizing is planning. So it's basically just deciding what you're going to be working on, getting an idea of what, um, how you want that space to function, um, you know, what needs to be there, what doesn't. You can skip this step right now, right? We don't need to plan. We're just going to be looking for little things to do in step two. Step two is the sorting and the purging. So this is where we want to focus because this is going to be taking the inventory and going to be probably making a bigger impact. But we'll get back to that in just a minute. Uh, Step three is organizing. So this is after you've done your purging, you're going to actually assign homes for items that you have now. Skip it. Um, And the maintenance piece right now, putting things away. I, I want to say skip it because you're not going to worry about that right now. But I will tell you, maintaining makes the other steps a lot easier mm-hmm. uh, if you do have some kind of like maintenance um, involved. But we can talk about that another time. Um, so right now we're going to focus on step two. This is, uh, again, where you kind of take an inventory of whatever it is that you're going through. Um, you're looking at the item and you're deciding whether you're going to keep it, donate it or trash it. So basically three, you know, three answers, keep it, donate or trash, grab a trash bag, box, whatever you want to do to collect the items that you um, have decided are going to be gone, that are going to be let go of. And uh, to make this even easier for you, I would just 
create kind of some standbys. So whenever you get that feeling of organizing, grab that trash bag and just start sorting and putting things in it. So we want to make this really simple and easy. It's not something hard to do. Um, The other thing that we want to do in this stage right now to keep it uh, easy is we want to make all of the easy decisions. So if this is not the time for you to make hard decisions or even anything that are the maybes. Does that make sense? Yeah, totally. Yeah. So if you can see it and you know you don't want it, then just put it away. Keep moving on. If you're not sure, keep it. Keep moving on. Right. And and uh, you know one of the one of the little rules that we had had put together in that course that I think I'm reflecting on right now. Right. Right. Is that uh, you know if you're if you're stuck on what maybe should be an easy decision to get rid of something, but you think, oh, maybe, maybe, maybe I should keep it around. Uh, Definitely think through how hard it would be to replace it. Um, Because it it might be a thing that you you could, under normal circumstances, borrow very easily from a neighbor or run Mm -hmm. down to Home Depot and get. Right now, you might want to be thinking about how hard would it be for me to replace this because I can't just go to Home Depot in 15 minutes and pick it up or I I can't, you know, because of social distancing or cleaning, whatever, I, I it's going to be harder to to replace this thing. And so that may impact your y- your decision. So uh, that is one that I, I'm constantly like weighing, you know, should I just throw mm-hmm. this in the garage because I know I might need it in six weeks and then purge it or like have a little sort of post staging yeah area that you can come back to. I mean, that might be a good way to actually split the project, right? That um, those things that you're there, you're more on the verge of getting rid of, but you're not quite sure you could always kind of put to the side. And then the next time you can come back and check them out again. Right, right. Absolutely. But to your point, getting them out of the house, like putting them Mm -hmm. in that staging place, like under a shelf in the garage or something, just get it out of the house goes so far to relieving that pressure. It really does. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah. Uh, so here are some just quick, easy tasks um, that you can do that I think, you know, can really help make a difference. Um, again, I'm going to emphasize this. Uh, I, I just think it's so important. Use that timer and make a game out of it. It's the way to engage in this. It's just like, Pete, when you guys did the um, 31 day challenge in January and you had each day you had to have like one thing you decluttered and then the second day. Two That's things, right. Yeah. We decluttered right? the amount of things for whatever day of the month it was in January. So and yeah. it was additive. So by the end, we had to find 31 days worth of things. So 31 things to declutter out of our house. It was and add all those up. It was right. extraordinary. It was extraordinary. It is. It is extraordinary. And, I, you know, that's sort, that's a game. That's yeah. putting a game to it. So it's making it a lot more engaging. Um, junk drawers can be something that uh, you can you can take care of. And what I mean by this, because I know what my drunk, my junk drawer, not drunk drawer, <laughs> junk drawer looks like. Um, I wouldn't necessarily want to organize it, but I would be OK with getting the junk out of it. And then Mm -hmm. just being done. So that's what I mean by skipping the organizing step is that you don't necessarily have to go back and organize it. Just get the stuff out that you know is trash or whatever. Because we all have that, right? We all throw stuff in there that we think we're going to need. And then we figure out that we don't. So, and then be done. Uh, Another really quick and easy thing to do in your closets or your dressers is just go through your clothes and just donate the easy decisions. So anything that you know that you haven't worn in a long time, you don't like, all you're doing is you're just spending some time and some focus on this one area. But again, you're not having to take everything out and try stuff on and redo it. We're not saying that. Just easily, quick, quickly go through your clothes and donate whatever you don't want. Can I just say one thing? Yeah. I still live by a thing, a set of closet things that you set out for me 10 years ago. Oh, geez. Yeah. So first of all, it was to get the fancy hangers, like the felt, like velveted hangers that Uh are kind of sticky. So your clothes don't slide off and stretch out. Yep. And I got enough hangers for the clothes that I had and loved at that time. And the in one, out one rule of hangers to clothes has been extraordinary for me. If I get new clothes or if I get a new stitch fix or something, if I need to shake it up, it has become so easy to determine what stays and what goes because 
the rule in my closet, I swear, this may seem totally arbitrary, is if I have too many clothes for the amount of hangers that I have, I must get rid of clothes. Something not to get. add hangers. Not add hangers. I love that. <laughs> I that love has, that takeaway. <laughs> it has been transformative for me because I don't anymore get into the closet overflow. If I get something lovely that somebody gives me that um, you know, that as a gift and and I love it, I'll keep it, but I've got that comes at a cost. Like that's right. a direct cost. Something is gonna go. And it used to be like if the thing fit me, I would keep it forever. And Mm -hmm. that that can't like I can't live like that. And so I'm also trying to be much more conscientious about how long like the shelf life of my clothes. Like I want to Mm -hmm. be so intentional that I'm not constantly throwing clothes out like or donating clothes. That is that is also irresponsible. So it's just really changed the way I've I've thought about clothes. So anyhow, great. I love it. Love it. Well, the next tip I have here is something that you've already kind of mentioned, and that's doing your dishes. It really is amazing how uh, cluttered a kitchen can look when there's lots of dishes. I say this with full experience every day of my life (laughs) Um, and how, you know, you you put them away and it really only takes a take. Well, sometimes it takes longer, but it really is less time than what you think. It's one of those things that you always think it's going to take forever, but it really doesn't take that long once you do it. Uh, But your kitchen is always going to look nicer when there is a a clean sink. It's true. And and keep just remind yourself how good it feels not the night when you're doing your dishes, but the right. morning when you come in. It yeah, feels that's what you have so to keep thinking. Good. Yeah. That's right. Um, if you have a purse or a bag or a work bag, just dump everything out and get rid of the trash and then put everything back in. Yeah. Quick, easy thing to do. Uh it's amazing how quickly you can um add up you know, gum wrappers, receipts you don't need anymore, you know, all this stupid stuff. So just get rid of the trash. Um, Something else that we have a problem with, I don't know. I, I don't know. I'm assuming other people do too. Uh, but putting away our clean clothes, so that's just some, that's tough. Like they end up staying in the laundry room for some reason. Oh, that's um, interesting. Yeah. Or they'll stay like on the dresser. Like I mm-hmm. have clothes right now on my dresser that need to be put away. So um, I would say that for us, if I just took 15 minutes and maybe I'll do that today and see how many of them I can put away. That's pretty it, handy. Yeah. I I, uh, I would advise you to start watching a perfect laundry TV show like Bless This Mess, for example, is my laundry TV show. Yes. <laughs> and so we'll put on an episode of Bless, that, Bless This Mess, and I have exactly 23 minutes to fold and put away the laundry. And even if I'm like kind of moving slowly, it's okay because I'm enjoying the show and I'm laughing and I'm it kind of moves the thing forward. So what is Bless This Mess? Oh, How do God, I know, not so know about It's so delightful. This? It's so delightful. Uh, Dax Shepard and... Um, uh, oh. His wife. The TV they, show. Yeah. It, well, they they are city folk, and they move to the country, and okay. they inherit an old farm, and it is them integrating into this life, and it is so random and so hysterical for us, at least. It's the right. it, It's every episode yeah. is just worth such a random chuckle. So. Great. Okay, I know what you're talking about. At first, I thought you were talking about like a cl- like a cluttered show, like something. No, no, on no. HGTV. But I, I'm like, what? <laughs> no, the title is the title is is you know, irrespective of like home organizing, it's just right. a funny show, and it. Yeah. yeah, I like the title because it reminds me to keep moving forward with my cleaning. <laughs> right. Absolutely. <laughs> that's great. Well, and then you can associate something good with something that's not as much fun, too, right? So you're kind of exactly. associating it with with something right. positive. I like that. Um, now this actually, this next tip really helps, I think, with the maintenance piece. And if you do this every day, I think you'd be really surprised how much clutter you could actually get rid of in your house. And that's just going around your home for 15 minutes and pick up and put away as much as you can, or, um, you know, purge, you know, just start an area, 15 minutes, purge, whatever. But I think even picking things up and putting them away can make a big difference on the maintenance piece and get the family involved. You know, you don't have to do it by yourself. I tend to put the stuff that goes upstairs for the kids. I put them on the stairs so they have to, you know, they're either going to go, well, and this happens. They'll either like step over it (laughs) upstairs or sometimes my husband will put this note. We have this note saved where it says, you know, before you go up or stop, it says like, stop. Yeah. 
take your clothes up. <laughs> You know, so that's it, like a nice reminder. The the last time we talked about this, it, it, there was some years ago, and we yeah. uh, we started doing that, uh, putting on a like the daily cleanup song, right? Loud music for five uh-huh. minutes, and you clean and purge and put things away as fast as hard and fast as you can, the whole house, for as long as the song lasts, and oh, that's then a you're great done. Idea then yeah. if it didn't get done, you put it away. You just leave it where it is for tomorrow. Eventually, the house got clean, mm-hmm. and um. And we stopped having to do it, right? There was this little peak where it was super fun to do every day. And then we just kind of got better at having some new habits. So yeah. that was, I, I kind of miss it. Uh, mm-hmm. At the same time, I like that that people have, have generally improved just and, and, and like anyway. to keep their stuff in their rooms. Yeah. Yeah, so. that's great. That's great. Uh, let's see, a couple other things. Um, go through a stack of mail. Again, set the timer. I know that a lot of people right now are like, I have stacks of mail. I have mail everywhere. Just get a small stack, set the timer, go through as much as you want. Junk mail maybe is the only thing that you're looking at and mm-hmm. you're done. So um, that's definitely one of those projects that are going to be finished, but not not necessarily completed. Um, same thing with any kind of stacks of paper that you have in your office or laying around anywhere on the counters, just going through it. Can't emphasize the timer. <laughs> I think it's really important. Now, if you don't want the timer and you want to just work, that's great. I mean, that's certainly um, a wonderful thing. I just don't mm-hmm. think it's, it's as realistic. Um, the other last thing I would say here is just work on one little cluttered spot. So maybe it's like a dining room table, a nightstand, um, whatever you think might help you be a little bit more inspired to complete it. So I think that like nightstands are a really good thing to do. Like if you have a bunch of stuff on a nightstand, just taking a couple of minutes to, okay, put the medicines away if they're not supposed to be there, whatever, um, can make a big difference. And, uh, I know tables and things like that. Little areas just get kind of built up. So just spending a couple of minutes to look at a cluttered area and do as much as you can. The the permission part is the most important because all of these things, even the quick and easy tasks, are it's pretty easy if you're not careful to allow them to burden you. Yeah, and, absolutely. Uh, but, it, but if you start with this mindset that it's okay, it's okay to do as much as I am able to do right now. It's okay that it's unfinished. It's okay that I come back when I have more energy or insight to do this. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, it's okay to it's okay to give away. It's okay to donate. It's okay yeah. to recycle. Um, you, you can make yourself feel a lot better. This has been great, Nikki Kinzer. Thank you. Look, you want to talk a little bit about next week? Yes. Yeah, so next week, we're going to have a special guest um, coming on our show for the very first time. Her name is Lisa Woodruff. Um, I'm guessing that probably many people have heard from her. She's from Organize 360. And uh, she's the creator of that uh, website. And there's lots of different Um, products and things like that that she does and courses and everything so she specifically next week is going to be here to talk about the Sunday basket which um, I you know from what I've heard I know some clients have had some real uh, great success with this idea and it's going to talk about mail and and filing and and some of the paper clutter that is uh, uh, probably piling up so excellent yeah, I'm Sunday excited basket to, to meet her. Uh huh. Yeah, That'd absolutely. That'll be delightful. She's been she's been great to exchange email with. Email yes, with in, in prep. So looking forward to seeing absolutely. her in real life next week. So thank you, uh, everybody, for hanging out with us. Uh, we appreciate your time and your attention. On behalf of Nikki Kinzer, I'm Pete Wright. We'll catch you next week right here on Taking Control, the ADHD podcast. Mm-hmm.